Eric Niemannen, who is an artist, a painter, teacher, traveler. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Great work with all your uh, paintings, by, like super impressive. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Thanks. I love your space. Is that where you usually do your work? Is that where you, where you create? Yeah, this is the studio space where I, uh, I'm usually to be found here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And that's in Montreal, right? Yeah, yeah. We basically split the space in two. My wife has uh, that side and I have this side. And it works out perfectly. Is she an artist as well? She is, yes. <laughs> so yeah. cool. Yeah. That's competition. Awesome. Right on. Yeah, same, that's same, right. Yes. Is it the same studio we uh, had the interview? Yeah, yeah, same one. Same, same one? one. Right on. Uh, when you have a good space in Montreal, you sort of tend to hang on to it. Yeah, because uh, imagine <laughs> they they they're not easy to come by. Oh, hold on, okay. we're launching. Hold on, I'm I'm getting a big announcement here. So Eric, just so you know, we're la launching our season two premiere today. Well, that's exciting. We actually drove to Montreal, uh, the team, and we shot some footage in Montreal, and. Andre you. created this beautiful, beautiful piece, and it's it's launching in like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Awesome. Yeah, I see. I see the countdown. Yeah, oh my cool, gosh! You know? Ten, nine, you guys. There you go. Wow! Jeez, it's gonna two. start. It is like New Year's. Four, three. Eric two. is getting a spoil there. <laughs> All right. Here it is. Yay! Yay. Yeah. We lost count after twelve thousand steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh what was the like really yeah how, how, did eric uh, climb the mont royal just to go get some great uh, architectural or great ideas of uh, paintings i bet you uh well i haven't gone up there to get any painting ideas but i certainly climbed mont royal i've, I've run i run on mont royal sometimes um so yeah definitely it's not that far from the studio actually as, uh, as Andre knows, when he was doing some filming here several years ago, uh, it's not far at all, walking distance or running distance, if you prefer. That's cool. Yeah. Who, do you run, who do you run from? Uh, my past. <laughs> no, um... <laughs> so you did a marathon. Is that what I saw at some point? No, gosh, no. I'll no, never do a no? marathon. Uh, no interest. None. Zero. I've done a, I've, like no, a no, no, no. I do. I, I take place. Uh, I take part in races and... Uh, I did a half marathon just for myself on my own, just in training, but I have no interest in doing a marathon. It's too far. Um, and yeah. it's too, too much to train, you, you know, it takes yeah. forever. Yeah. So it's no. a big commitment. What, what's the point? I mean, I know, no, I mean, no offense to those that want to do marathons. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's great, but you can still be in shape without doing a marathon. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're hard on the body too to do a marathon. Yeah, right? yeah. You kill on your, your knees. knees and do damage. Yeah. Oh yeah. Twenty minutes ish, nineteen minutes for five K and you know, around That's forty fast. ish. Around That's forty five ten, forty two. You know, That's good. these aren't crazy times, nice. but it's at least it's it's I try not to embarrass myself. That's the goal. Do you guys nice. want to see Eric run? Watch the documentary we did together. <laughs> yes, see him in action. <laughs> in Montreal, but you have to run behind him. I like that when you said Eric is that like, I mean, in 2011, the internet and now have everything has changed, right? I and mean, now you're, you, you're the artist, you're able to promote yourself, everybody sees your art, everybody can see, a, you use less of the, uh, the artist shows and stuff like that. Has it even better evolved uh, with the hiccup of this pandemic that we had? Uh, how was the experience with that? Were you able to get more attraction into your art? Uh, I think for a lot of artists, the pandemic was just business as usual, in a sense, um, in the sense of attention. I mean, things like Instagram and I guess it's mostly Instagram that artists use to, to promote their work. Um, maybe it just amplified, it amplified the effect a little bit. And there was things that popped up fairly early on in the pandemic in terms of maybe artist organized um organizations and online auctions and things of this sort that pushed the work of emerging artists and mid-career artists and so on that people might not have known 
before because there was no public place to see these things and there was shows that were canceled and delayed and all sorts of things like that. So uh, yeah, early on in 2020, there was a lot of um, access to new new eyeballs, I think, via the internet okay. and things like Instagram and Facebook for that matter with with all these online auctions, which was a new, a new phenomena it didn't exist prior to that. Um, but it was sort of, uh, it was always, it felt like just the normal evolution of things. Um, it's been a progression from the time when I, I did, I finished uh, school, I finished my master's degree in, in art in 2010. And around that time, at least where I went, which was Concordia University here in Montreal, uh, there was a real sort of um, idea that when you're here in school, it doesn't matter how old you are as an artist, that you should just sort of um, focus on making the work and not think about disseminating it out into the larger world or think about promoting it or selling it or any of that sort of thing. Just make the work. Uh, but mm -hmm. now, I mean, you, and, and so it was sort of just a mystery. Nobody really knew what all these MFA artists were doing up there in the fourth floor of the visual arts building. It was just sort of this big kind of nobody knows. And But now uh, it's it's totally different. The entire philosophy has changed. Um, in, in, I mean, there's Instagram accounts dedicated just to the people in those programs. Uh, they're encouraged to get out and show and, and push their work. And uh, so it, it, the pandemic felt like just a kind of an, an extension of what was already on the way. And it was, it was inevitable. I mean, you couldn't deny it in a sense. The internet just sort of pushes things forward in a visual manner that uh, uh, just wasn't possible before. And if there's a visual medium out there, um, artists will take advantage of it, no doubt. There's, there's no visual medium that artists have not tried. Uh, and it's happening now with AI and uh, AI generated images and such. Yeah. So it continues. Gonna, I'm going to show a thing about that later. Did you ever get into the NFT stuff? Did you start? Uh, no, not the NFT stuff. Although, I mean, maybe that could come back at some point. I didn't, because I don't make digital work. In fact, it's sort of the opposite of digital work in many ways. And so the NFT yeah. market is so dominated by artists who make work in a digital sphere, or at least um work with people that that are uh that are used to those sort of mediums that it felt just sort of redundant and a bit lame to just maybe take a photo of one of my paintings and turn it into an nft it just yeah i, I saw i saw a thing that was kind of interesting though a friend of mine uh, a scottish friend he went to berlin and bought a painting with the painting came a uh, an app there was a qr code and there was an nft loaded up so when you bought it, you automatically got an NFT too. Not just you had the painting, right? Yeah. Plus the yeah, NFT. Yeah. So like, it was kind of cool. It was kind of neat that because the the picture just got animated. Yeah. Was, well, I think that's like, that's it was interesting. It becomes interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think if there's an angle that you can do in that sense, like uh, you know, for instance, I was I actually thought about maybe making a work and then destroying it, or documenting it, then destroying the physical work, and so the any the only thing left then is the NFT, but uh, actually an artist, uh, Damien Hirst, this well-known British artist, just did something similar and turned it into a ritual, sort of burning in the gallery where he burned all the works that he had turned into NFTs and it was a whole multi-million dollar project. And so if there's some sort of performance or some sort of zany, whimsical aspect to mm -hmm. it, then maybe it's, it's worth it. But um, I don't know, it seems like NFTs have sort of- uh, It's like a fad, uh, it's infancy, eh? I think it's an infancy it's, it's, it's It's here to stay, but it's uh, it's it's so such a, it's at the mercy of the uh, crypto cycle and the cycles right now in a, what do they call yeah. it? The winter zone or the winter right now? And so- Crypto winter. Crypto winter and it's so the- Crypto crash uh, today. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so the NFTs, you know, they're not quite as exciting as they once seemed, I suppose. But yeah. I, on the other hand, you can get them for a discount. Um, maybe yeah, it's, you know. there's a lot of scams going on in the NFT network. Of course. Marketplaces. <laughs> well, there's a lot of scams in the real art world, too. In the physical yeah. world. Do you see I this? Do, yeah. I do, so yeah. I do, yeah. This is made by AI. They, they asked the, the AI to generate human evolution. Pretty spooky. Well, yeah, they talked about how all, how all the uh, designers and illustrators uh, have been... Uh, flipping out over the possibility of AI taking their jobs. Right. So many things, right? But I find the AI to be interesting 
not so much as a, I mean, yeah, it, this is interesting, obviously, and it's quite, it's ridiculously impressive. Um, but as an art form, I don't find AI, like purely AI generated art to be all that interesting. I think it, you know, it doesn't take into consideration things to do with composition. It's not an intellectually, uh, it's not thought out in any way. It's just kind of a set of visual algorithms that mash together right. and generate the best outcome possible, but there's no actual thought behind it. Um, yeah. So I, I sort of think about AI as something that you can collaborate with, almost like a partner. Um, yeah. So that so that so so what right. I've been doing is I've been uploading photos of previous paintings or drawings or various sorts of creations that I've made, sculptures, uh -huh. and um, allowing the AI to get in there and fiddle with it and change it and turn it into some version of its own, and then I take that and sort of reclaim it, sort of pump the humanity back into the AI. Uh, so that it's essentially myself and the AI teaming up, collaborating as, in essence to make a new work. Um, so that uh, it's just sort of an inter it's it's the AI comes in at a certain point and interferes, and then I take it from there. That's interesting. He's Neo from the Matrix. He's using <laughs> right. his knowledge and the AI together. That's right. right. Can you That's stop right. the bullets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the, or the paint yeah. blotches coming at you? Take the blue pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I, I very rarely get paint on me, so uh, I think that's what's happening. I just sort of, I dodge <laughs> the, the paint spiders. You ever work on multiple uh, paintings at once or always focus on one project at the same time or what? I usually just used to work on one at a time because it takes so long and there's always something to do in one or another corner of the painting, but... Uh, Recently, I've thought it might be more interesting if the paintings start speaking to each other. And so um, I've started to make smaller works, but also work, you know, I don't want to repeat myself. I get incredibly bored. Uh, there's lots of artists that work in series and so on and can work in variations of a particular theme and subject. But I just, I, I'd shoot myself. I just get so bored. Um, so, so I need to find a new way, another avenue into it. So, um, I think it's mostly just changing materials, changing, uh, like I was mentioning with, with the AI, you know, it's another way to sort of inject a, a, an element of surprise into the work and uh, sort of create some sort of new visual phenomena that didn't exist before. So, uh, so you know, using different kinds of uh, supports, putting dirt and sand and dust and all sorts of junk basically into the paint while I'm making it, just trying to kind of, uh, mix up the process itself. But uh, I, th I think, you know, the subject doesn't matter so much. So in terms of the biodome or whether it's cities or what have you, it's really how you paint it. And I could bore you with the details of the incremental changes that happen over time, but these are things that <laughs> it's, it's really only here. interesting. It's really only interesting to other painters is in essence, these little incremental changes, but I see them. It's just about how I think about space, how I think about line or color or form or depth or light and shade or what happens in the edges where one shape intersects another one. How does that, you know, do I blur the line? Do I keep it sharp? And what the, the overall totality, totality of all these ideas is what comes together to create a visual image. Um, and these are all shiftable and changeable and malleable. And, and so the subject doesn't matter. Um, you know, there's no original subject out there. Everybody's covered it at this point. It's just about how you treat it. So your favorite spot is still the biodome to go? Uh... I think so. Yeah, well, I'm fascinated by these little mini utopias, these uh, little gardens of Eden, that, these reverse gardens of Eden that, that we find in uh, in cities. Um, yeah, yeah especially know. Montreal. There's a lot of lot going on. Well, I'm lucky. I live 15 minutes away. I biked down there this morning. It took me 12 minutes to bike down to the biodome. Um, yeah. No, I, I, uh, Montreal's a good city for that. Any city that has, I mean, New York's good too. The, the footage that you were just showing there was from the Central Park Zoo. Oh, was um, it? Oh, I thought yeah. that was the biodome. Oh, well, there you go. Similarities. They're all the same. They're all pretty similar, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are these, hab yeah, they're habitats with lots of plants and animals. And then you walk out and you're in the middle of the city and it's like a startling oh. surreal moment as if you were in a dream or something. I, yeah. I there's one in the Netherlands. It's like three three times the size as the as the biodome. It's nuts. Full, full of jungle plants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. In the Netherlands, like in the middle of the Netherlands, there's like this big, huge. Th it's like three times bigger than biodome. Uh, well, I'll have to go there. It's really nice, and they have like like the uh, anyway. You have to check it out. 
you're yeah when you come to holland we'll i'll take you for a tour okay sounds good yeah well that's i mean look so th th these these sorts of yeah. things th the job of art is is you know you can think of it almost like escapism but it's not purely escapism because it can it can uh it's such a personal uh activity but um you know, it serves as a as a as a portal. In essence, uh, the paintings themselves are transponders that speak to people on an individual level. And and so, you know, you take a subject like plants or animals or even the city, and these are relatively mundane subjects. But when they're presented uh, in sort of a recontextualized way, so I sort of take the subjects, break them all apart in an explosive manner in a sense and then sort of cobble things back together from bits and pieces of video and drawing and dozens of photos and so what's created is something impossible and unreal in essence and so 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 the paintings you know they talk about everyday life things that we're familiar with but hopefully in a way that's sort of uh coming at it just from a slightly different angle i think you i've seen uh some oil painting and acrylic do what do you use prefer and do you mix both medias at the same time on, on different paintings uh it's it's mostly it's almost entirely oil uh i used to do acrylic back a long time ago maybe 15 years ago or something mostly when i was in school um but i switched to oil just as it's it's a it's a it's a better medium for people like me who take three months to make a painting um, because it dries slowly and you can go back in and rework areas and continue mixing the next day. Acrylic dries in like half an hour. So yeah. um, it's, it's not too convenient. So mostly, mostly oil painting. Um, I started making some sculptures. I draw as well. It's, you know, it's relatively conventional mediums, but uh, the thing about these mediums is that they're so malleable that you never really run out of things to discover in essence. Uh, the medium is as unique as every person is unique. And so it it's it's um it's kind of the most magical of visual mediums in the sense that uh it creates space out of colored mud that you just move around on a piece of cloth. Uh, mm -hmm. Or it can at least if you allow that possibility. And so it becomes this sort of magical medium that can sometimes sort of seem like you just took a bunch of pigment and just sort of blown it onto it canvas and it's landed somehow in the right place um and i'm mystified as to how i've done things after i've done it i look at that and i think geez i couldn't do that again uh you know this is uh, this is what i this is what keeps me coming back is these moments of surprise and and i'm always learning i'll never stop learning and in, you know they say that painting is an old person's art form in in the sense that you really only know what you're doing once you're old but i don't even i'm not even sure that'll be the case but uh it's, um, yeah, mostly oil paint. That's a long way of answering. I, you still like Montreal or you miss Berlin? Uh, yeah, I miss Berlin, um, but I do enjoy Montreal. Uh, yeah, well, my wife and I miss Berlin. Uh, it's a strange sort of city. Uh, while you're living there, you don't always appreciate it as much as maybe you should, because uh, you're dealing with the German bureaucracy, which is, yeah. it, they take it to another level just in terms of landlords and everything else and contracts for cell phones or internet. I mean, it's really, truly, it's, especially it's, when you're it, a foreigner, they give you a hard time. We, uh, uh, yeah. Although for me, it wasn't that so much because I have a European passport. Um, so I didn't have to deal with visas and, but yeah, they give you a hard time just in terms of, or, or like sometimes you don't they speak do German. And, if you don't speak, yes, speak perfect German, yes. they're like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. That can be, uh, uh, yeah, everybody says, "Oh, don't worry, they they all speak English." That's 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 not true. Mm -hmm. um, they'll let you know quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then and then someone also said, "Oh, don't worry, they speak French." Uh, that's that's not true either. There's no no. <laughs> so, but, but so anyway, so yeah, so so yeah, you get yeah. you you just get sort of used to the death stare, and uh, but eventually, you know, because here you get this sort of thing. You go into a store and you get this sort of overly friendly, "Hi, how are?" and you know so on and so forth and it's very clearly fake and it's not really genuine but um and so you know you get tired of that but then you live long enough in a place like germany where you get the death stare or the general sort of attitude and uh you start to miss the the, the fake pleasantries when i came back i was like oh wow look at this everybody's so <laughs> it's just so nice to be uh to pretend that everything's perfect so it's good it's um true yeah 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 so so but but i mean there's something to be said for the Nordic or German honesty, I guess that uh, 
Well, the Dutch are a little <laughs> yeah. bit the, the same. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I but, really but, notice but, it when I go back to Canada. I'm like, holy, we're so nice in Canada. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's hard to get into people's minds and know exactly what they're thinking. But uh, well, here, well, I think it's a Germanic way is more like they, they speak their minds. There's no filter. They do. No, right? No. So it's no, like there should be sometimes, but no, yeah. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, but at the same time, you get like it's I don't know. It works in a way. Like I see where they, they come from because now I've been here long enough, but like yeah, it 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 could change. Some things could change for sure. It's it is changing the, as yeah. the as as the uh generations change. Uh I mean I noticed that in Berlin. It was mostly you know, middle-aged former Eastern Berliners, mostly that had sort of attitude problems. Right. Uh, younger people or even Western Berliners didn't really have so much of an issue with, with foreigners, <laughs> basically. Yeah, um, it's quite a contrast, it, you know, eh, with East Berlin, like when you, you really know you're in East Berlin. like. Uh, well, actually, not, not as much as I expected, at least. I mean, it, okay. it, it depends where in East Berlin. Uh, but, you know, compared to what it was, you know, when it first was separated, I mean, now the only demarcation for the most part is like a row of bricks, like a line of bricks on the street, which tells you, oh, oh, this side was east and this side was west. But otherwise you wouldn't know. Um, but there are some parts of the former east, like farther out, yeah, outside went, the I, city almost. That, uh, there's a few wall, the yeah. pieces of the wall. Yeah, there's some bits of the wall that are up here and there. Um, it was super cool. It was so awesome to go down there and see, like, to see you and do the dock and, like, just go th through the whole city together. Well, there was all that graffiti stuff, too, that you documented, yeah. which which is is sort of associated with the, the history of the wall, right? Which was... Yeah, uh, true, true. Yeah. And it was fun, too, because we went to all those... Uh, we went on the art weekend, was it? It was Art Weekend on May Day. It might May have been. Yeah. It was like a May. It's like the biggest party in Germany, like on May first. Yes. Yeah. And so oh. that's when we showed up and we met up with Eric and he brought us everywhere, you know, like and that on that weekend there was like art exhibits all across the city. It was so cool. Yeah. And all these these yeah. abandoned like they look like abandoned buildings and they turned them into restaurants. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you were there. You shot that show. Uh, that was sort of in an abandoned former factory as that well. It was like a big group show. Uh, well, this is basically what turned Berlin into what it is today. After That's the right. wall came down, there was a bunch of derelict abandoned buildings that cost nothing. And it turned into a city of squatters, basically, and other sort of weirdos and artsy <laughs> types and whatever. And uh, until wild. about five years ago, that's what it remained, slowly yeah. gentrifying until now it's, I mean, a lot of the artists and so on are leaving because of price increases. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what always happens, right? The artists arrive, it, it slowly gets exciting, and then the artists leave because they can't afford it anymore. Happened to Paris, happened to London, happened Montreal. to New York. Montreal. Montreal, although the language laws did it in here too, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I traveled a lot around Europe when I was, when I was living in Berlin. Um, you know, Austria, France, Italy. Uh, I went to the Netherlands, um, England. London was basically not like a second home, but I think I was there a dozen times or so. Um, so there's so much so that it just felt like, yeah, I was, I was very familiar with the city and I sort of treat New York here in a similar way. I've been there uh, almost a couple dozen times and it's it's so close. I love, I love these sort of... Uh, big bustling metropolises that that uh just they contain basically everything you'd actually ever need um but i'm not sure i'd actually want to live in one uh or at least in the middle of one i say that and i'm, and I'm living in montreal but i don't really feel like montreal is a big bustling metropolis at least compared to new york i was just in new york last week and uh was you come back here and it it's so quiet and you just wonder where everybody is uh <laughs> so so yeah so um so yeah, but I've 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 traveled around, but you know I don't find the travel actually it's it's very enriching and nourishing, and I and I really enjoy it. Um, it has you know for a lot of artists, travel is indelibly linked to to what they make and everything. And you know if they move to another city, their work changes. But for me, nothing really changes. I just uh, as long as I have a studio, nothing really seems to 
penetrate the walls of the studio. Like, mm -hmm. um, so, what yeah. about the music? What, 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 we're a show of music and food, so we're like, we're gonna like, what do you eat? What do you eat at the studio, and what what are you listening to? <laughs> um, well, I'll start with the music, I guess. Uh, you know, I used to listen to a lot of music while painting. Mostly, that's when I listen to music is, is while painting, uh, and I still do, but less mostly because of the uh, the advent of things like this, of podcasts, um, which there's just too many interesting things out there to listen to. And it's just, <laughs> uh, but, but in terms of music that I like, it's generally, I like most things, except I guess I don't listen to a lot of, I don't listen to really pop music or country music or that sort of stuff. Nothing with, let's just simplify it and say nothing with lyrics. Um, right. I don't listen to anything with lyrics. I just like to be transported into something that's purely a sonic experience and not for the same reason. I don't put any words in my paintings. Uh, I don't, I don't, I prefer not to have words in music though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I don't dislike music with words. It's just that, uh, or for, for it's less creative. of a, it's less of a pardon. For when you're being creative, it, it's a hinder. I have the same yeah, way. Yeah. Like if I'm yeah. editing, Oh, I need, yeah, I can't have lyrics like a beat or whatever. That's good. Classical yeah. no lyrics. No, I get it. So electronic music, uh, a lot of German kraut rock from the 70s, uh, 80s to now. Uh, Tangerine Dream uh, can, but then other electronic sort of pioneers, people like Jean-Michel Jarre, uh, mm. Mike Oldfield, um, also minimalist music, I guess that falls into sort of the classical genre, but it's it's stuff that actually influenced electronic music. So uh, Steve Reich, uh, Philip Glass, sort of this music that gets you into a rhythm, I guess, basically. There's a lot of sequencers and things in these electronic uh, bands. And so it's just stuff that gets me into a rhythm where I don't have to think too much. Right. Yeah. I wonder what uh, kind of creations you can do with some jazz. Like it's all over the place. So, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of this of the of, of the saxophone. Just the sound of it. It doesn't. <laughs> I don't dislike it. It's just yeah. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't work for me. But you uh, like something yeah, with yeah. a beat. Yeah. Yeah. With a with a with a um with a strong sort of thematic element. Let's say. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and but, but, but jazz is, I mean, it, I almost feel bad saying that because jazz is supposed to be the music of the artists, right? It, uh, yeah, but it's, I, it's I improvisational, it's, like, it's creative, it's, yeah. But it's yeah. also part of what the music you listen to, right? It had an influence, jazz had an influence on that music, right? It all, sure, yeah. Yeah. Think, you know, One yeah. And what kind of jazz became blues, blues became rock. Kind of exactly, exactly, yeah. And what kind of food uh, do you usually tend to eat? Like, I mean, in your know, Montreal, you get a lot of different cultures and food wise. Uh, what do you do when you're on a busy day at a studio? Do you just go out for a walk and get something, or do you, what's your favorite? Or, you know? Uh, well, you know, eat? I mean, we're, we're on, a, on a daily yeah. basis, yeah. Well, on a daily basis, I just bring my own food to the studio. It, uh, I have a fridge here and I just keep things here. But, um, uh, you know, I wish there was more, not that I'm biased or anything, but I am. Uh, I wish there was more <laughs> Finnish, Finnish food and, and just sort of Scandinavian food in Montreal. Okay. Uh, basically, this doesn't exist. <laughs> there's, there's about 2 million Portuguese restaurants and other sort of uh, places in Montreal, but not one sort of Nordic, <laughs> Nordic oh, bakery hard. or Nordic uh, restaurant to be, to be uh, heard of which is a shame because it's underrated and I will keep banging that drum that Nordic food, though some people think it's bland and tasteless and maybe has too much salt and whatever. No, it's actually very flavorful. Uh, they make the best pastries despite the French and others maybe thinking otherwise and the Germans definitely thinking otherwise. Uh, they make right. the best rye bread. Uh, you know, again, living in Berlin, they have rye bread there and you just wonder what this sort of bizarre concoction of pasty bread is. Um, no, no, no. The, the Finnish rye bread is the real rye bread. Um, so my favorite food, if you can guess, is actually Finnish food, which right. you can never get um, in Montreal. So uh, you, re you have to basically make it yourself with whatever you can get. Uh, and uh, 
but I'll, but otherwise, in terms of going out to eat, I'll go out and eat pretty much anything. Um, sushi, Indian and, food. There's pretty much everything. In Berlin, everything uh, in yeah. Berlin was, uh, was you know Germans. They like they like their beer and their sausages. Schnitzel, man. Schnitzel, and stuff, so. yeah. And sausage. Yeah. Those are the best. Yeah, a lot of potatoes and sausages and sauerkraut. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Dutch tea. and uh, and a lot of Vietnamese <laughs> food in Berlin. Interestingly, really yeah. Indian food yeah. as well, right? Indian, Indian, and Vietnamese and German. That seems Turkish. to be the top three. Turkish, Turkish, Turkish well. yes, but that's not so much a place for yeah, non-Turkish true. people. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a bit. No, I'm not trying to generalize here, but I don't know of a Turkish restaurant that I knew anybody anybody actually went into. Uh, there was a, there's a lot of <laughs> Turkish people. But there's a lot of very sketchy places and you have to know, I guess, exactly That's which true. one to go to and don't wander into the wrong one because, uh, well, yeah. just, yeah. 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 We'll leave it so at if that. Somebody, <laughs> so if somebody from Montreal watches our show, well, you need to know, uh, you need to open a Finnish or Scandinavian uh, restaurant. Exactly. Uh, and then go out of business oh, within it. two years. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They, they yeah. also make the best smoked salmon. Let's not forget yeah. that. They yes. absolutely do. It's the Finnish specialty. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the Scandinavians, they all have good smoked salmon. I can't claim it for the Finns, but, uh, but definitely, yeah. No, uh, that's my favorite sandwich food is, is smoked salmon. Uh, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's Rap a classic. Box and all. Yeah. Yep. So you're the into thing. the French-Canadian stuff or? Uh... Poutine? You mean like what? Poutine? <laughs> poutine? Uh, not a big fan of poutine. Beaver tail? It's all right. I know you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you are. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I find it a bit rich, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But it's all right. You can't have that every day. You can't have that no, every day. That's no. for sure. No. <laughs> but French Canadian food is kind of, I mean, it's not that different from European food, really, uh, other than poutine. Like, what would you say? No, but like for like turkey, you know, turkey dinners and. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, but tafsia. Canadians generally have turkey dinners. Yeah, that's true. Like tafsia. Uh, what yeah, else shepherd's pie. Yeah. Yeah. But, again, tor- good but again, yeah. he, you know, tortillas are meat excellent, pie. but yeah. but sadly pale in comparison to Finnish meat pies. So I- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not biased at That's all. No bias, no bias. No, no bias. bias. Yes. Do you have Do you have a famous uh, Finnish meat pie? Maybe I could do that on the show one day. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what it's called, and I'm not even sure how to make it. So that's a problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're small. They're like. They're small little pies. They're not like a big sort of pie that you yeah. cut into. It's a, it's a, it's sort of almost bite sized. Like personal yeah, yeah. size. I know what a Finnish guy. He plays hockey for the team here. Uh, maybe I can get him on the uh, do there something. We'll make a recipe with him. Yeah. The power of expression. Like this is what is it's all about. And just whatever is in you, get it out and and share it with the world. I just love that. Yeah, that's all. That's uh, I'm I'm a privileged person, you know. I don't take it for granted. I don't also, you know, I sort of feel like it could fall apart tomorrow. So I don't I don't take any of this for granted. Um, I just, like I said, I just persevere. And when things don't go my way, I don't give up. And I have high ambition, but no expectation. That's my general philosophy for all this. So that when something good happens, I'm really pleasantly surprised. Um, Maybe. Yeah. Well, I see. I see the parallels between what you were saying about your art and music, right? Like a blank canvas, and you just kind of pluck it in, and you don't know where it's going to go. And yeah, and yeah. Next thing you yeah, know, you have yeah. a composition, right? If I knew where it was going to go, I'd stop doing it. I think because I'd be bored. So right. Um, it's about cre- creations of alternate realities. I'm really interested in that three-dimensional green piece you have to your left. Are you working with plaster? What what's going on there? Uh, I do. I work with clay, but this is actually tape. Oh, oh wow! Okay. <laughs> okay. Looks like, looks I was, like a big I was fancy painting. Stare there, Rick. I think she was going to send me to buy it from you. Well, <laughs> holy ball. Ooh, I can make. I, it I, you know, you know, you're you're free to buy it, or you're free to send someone to buy it. Uh, but. Prepare to be disappointed. Um, yeah. You dodged the bullet, Frank. <laughs> okay. On the other hand, on the other hand, maybe the look of it means I should actually seriously consider uh, maybe <laughs> casting it in bronze or something, and uh, yeah. totally changing direction. Hey, there's your yeah. first NFT right there, bud. 
<laughs> there you go. Take a yeah. picture. Mint it. I, like it. I, lo I love three dimensional art. I, I, I Daisy does some painting well, you know, with uh, clay and uh, some uh, some plastic. Oh, yeah. Right. You can see behind him. Uh, Frank oh there. my gosh! Please stop. No, like at all. Daisy's artwork. Oh, Daisy's artwork, stop yeah. it! Oh gosh! So like, <laughs> I love, I love. <laughs> what would you recommend to a kid out there or someone who wants to become an artist? Like, um. Yeah, just make sure that you're doing it for the art and not for the money, because most artists don't make any money. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, gosh, well, I mean, you can't really teach someone to be an artist, can you? Um, and it's and it's so hard to even advise them, because it's just basically, you know, there's a general thought that artists are almost hedonists, you know, that they uh, that they just, they have this lifestyle of, of sort of an idealist lifestyle of getting to make work, getting to make paintings and such, uh, which, you know, and doesn't everybody just want to sit back on a Sunday and make some paintings. Um, but artists can support hedonism, but they're workers. And if you don't work hard and have an incredible amount of discipline, uh, it's not worth doing because you're just going to fiddle about. And even, even if you do have all those things, there's no guarantee that things will work out. So you really do have to make sure that uh, you have a plan B. It's important to have a plan B. Not that you wouldn't be an artist, but just you know, financially, it's it's good to have pot potentially some other sort of form of income on the side. So I think that would be it. Work hard and have another form of income. You want to plug something? Uh, you got a not, show coming up? Or? Not not yet. Talk to me in a year. I'll have a bunch of things to plug. Your uh, Instagram <laughs> or your Facebook, Instagram or oh, your book. Oh. You're writing a book. Your no, book. Well, <laughs> I'm. I'm not. Well, yes, I'm sort secret? of writing a book. Uh, it's not. It's not a secret, but just okay. it's. It's very, very much in progress. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of writing a book um, about basically the creation of a painting from the beginning to the end and its eventual, um, well, whatever happens with it. But sort of from the point of view, almost as if you were a fly crawling over the surface of the painting. So it's really sort of turning the creation almost mark by mark into a poetic kind of act. So sort of seeing it from the side of each mark um, that you put onto the canvas turns into a metaphor for, for life in some sense. So it's a diaristic journal style book um, influenced by some other things that I've read. And I thought it'd just be interesting to try and do myself and we'll see how it works. So the idea would be to have a show of that painting and whatever else happens as a result of that painting at the same time as uh, launching the book, probably in a couple of years. I'm not sure when exactly, but uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Otherwise Instagram. I just have a bunch of things. Uh, Instagram uh, is um, at Eric N Art. So E-R-I-K-N Art. And uh, your website? Is uh, Eric Niemnen dot com and i guess uh my name will be we'll put it somewhere. on the bottom yeah yeah, yeah we'll yeah. put it on the bottom wow. of so i don't have to spell it all the e's and i's and m's and n's and, you know. <laughs> we'll put a the qr uh, the we'll put a qr code all. there oh yes scan yeah. it. hey we sell t-shirts uh maybe we uh can sell some t-shirts and uh some art piece for you we yeah. created these ones with like qr codes so people can just scan you and they like go right onto the the youtube channel oh that is cool huh <laughs> yeah or, i should i should think about doing that yeah Cool. You want to go in the t-shirt business with us? <laughs> <laughs> Two I don't know questions. if I'm ready, but they're coming, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no choice. But... Okay. Uh, it's, city... it's, it's like a, it's like it's like I'm tied up to the to the, the pole there in the firing range. City or countryside? Uh city for now. Uh club or concert. Country, countryside later. <laughs> club or concert? Concert. Electronic music or uh, pop music? Sometimes it's the same, but electronic. Uh, blues or jazz? Jazz. East or Western Canada? East. Soccer or hockey? <laughs> um, soccer. But football. I mean, soccer, football. In other words, you yeah. got to call it by the right name. That's right. That's right. Uh, um, potato, potato. Potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Van Gogh or Dali? Van Gogh. Oh. Okay. Now it's the uh, first thing that comes to mind. Uh, Canada? Oh, a word? Um, first thing that comes to mind. Uh, comfortable. USA. Wild? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Europe? Evolving. Berlin. Uh, <laughs> relaxed. Montreal? Trying hard. Music. Rhythmic. James Bond. <laughs> uh, my hero. No, 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 no. He's not actually my hero. Um, <laughs> uh, James Bond. Uh, good music. Good music. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, what do you think of him? Not bad. <laughs> Overrated. No, um, no. Uh, well, he did it all. I wish I was like him. Hmm. Picasso? Not. It can't be overrated. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, AI art. I'm not sure it's art yet. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite superfood? What's a superfood? Well, whatever you know, you think is a superfood oh. to you. Uh, smoked salmon is a superfood to me. <laughs> uh, your superpower? Uh, I I orchestrate possibilities for others. Mm. Oh. Uh, your paradise. It's here, in the studio. Uh, most important lesson. Just always persevere. Yeah, I know. That's you're you're doing well, Eric. I mean, geez, it's like you said, it's hard to get there, and uh, I'm doing okay. I'm yeah, I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot, Eric. Well, thank uh, you so you. much. Pretty Everyone, cool. check out Anonymous Reality Documentary. It's fantastic. Yeah, sure. Um, is. Check it yeah. out. Eric, thank you so much for coming on our show. We are so privileged to have you. I, I really believe that. And um, please keep us posted when your next exhibit in, is in Montreal. We yeah, would we'll love to you. come and check it out. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. We'll yeah, plug we'll it. To. But also, it's a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. Not I far away. Pilot so we could go to the Bankies for Putin. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> our, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very thank much. Thank you so Eric. much, Eric. Really, really awesome. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Good, thank man. you. Very informative. This. Bye, guys. Have, Have a nice day. Bye. 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 That's funny. Eric. Great. Everybody. Great, great, uh, oh, my gosh. Well, that was fun.